Hi, in this video we're going to talk about how to set up a project in Dolby Vision using DaVinci Resolve for a Netflix production. First, we are going to explain what we need to do in the project settings inside Resolve to start working in Dolby Vision. Then we are going to explain and start working with the internal CMU. And in the end, we are going to export a Dolby Vision metadata file. Dolby Vision is an HDR framework that helps maintain creative intent from the image seen in the color grading suite all the way to the consumer device being used to watch Netflix. Before diving into Resolve, let's explain why Netflix selects Dolby Vision as an HDR standard for their productions. Dolby Vision is a technology developed by Dolby that allows for HDR master image to be mapped to any display that has a Dolby Vision chip in it, while perceptually maintaining the creative intent of the original grade on the display. Using Dolby Vision, one can also create a derived SDR version from the HDR master content, allowing consumers who do not own an HDR device to view the content on an SDR display. Now let's take a closer look at the workflow. First, HDR images get analyzed and mapped to SDR on a shot by shot and frame by frame basis. Dolby Vision also allows us to make further adjustments to the base SDR analysis using what we call trim controls. All of this information gets recorded as dynamic color metadata. This metadata can be exported to continue mastering in other software or maybe embedded directly into the IMF using DaVinci Resolve. What this means for a production is that they will only need to deliver one HDR video render with a campaigning Dolby Vision metadata then. After delivering the Dolby Vision IMF, Netflix will take care of creating all the Dolby Vision, HDR10, and SDR encoding by deriving all of them from the single Dolby Vision IMF master. For mastering Dolby Vision, we need to correctly set up DaVinci Resolve. Let's create a new project with the name of Dolby Analysis. Then open the project settings by either pressing Shift 9 or clicking on the small gear icon in the bottom right side of the interface. In the project settings, we will check the resolution and frame rate in the master settings menu. In this case, our project has a resolution of 3840 by 2160 and a frame rate of 2397. We will select the same resolution and frame rate in the video monitoring menu. The video monitor settings are up to your monitor capabilities and have no effect on the final render. In a project using Dolby Vision, it is essential to enable Use 444 SDI because all Dolby Vision analysis and algorithms assume that you are looking at a 444 signal on your monitor. It is also mandatory to work in full range for grading in Dolby Vision. Try to get the highest bit depth you can from your color corrector. This means that if you have a compatible external output that supports 12-bit and your monitor supports 12-bit input, then enable 12-bit for your video bit depth. Now let's move on to the color management menu. Here you can set up your preferred method of color management. If you want to know more about these settings, click this link. In our case, we are going to set up a project in ACES. For the color science, select ACES CCT. On the version dropdown, choose 1.1 and leave the IDT as no input transform. For the ODT, we will select P3D65 ST2084 1000 nits, since that matches the capabilities and calibration of our mastering display. Please note that the ODT configuration, the monitor calibration and the Dolby Vision settings are closely tied together and the three must match in order to have accurate results. Now we are going to click on the checkbox Enable Dolby Vision. This will enable the internal content mapping unit inside Resolve. This will also activate the Dolby Vision palette in the color page, which will allow us to perform all the needed operation to run Dolby Vision in Resolve. In the following options, we are going to select the Dolby Vision version to be used. We encourage using version 4.0 for any Netflix production. 
The version number may change in the future if a newer version is developed by Dolby. Below we are going to tell the system what mastering display has been calibrated for. This setting creates level 0 or global metadata and will be stored in the metadata file. That's why this selection must match your monitor and output transform settings. In our case we will select 1000 nits, P3D65, ST2084, full. As a tip be aware that changing the version after the Dolby analysis was performed will result on the deletion of your previous analysis. Once this setup is complete the Dolby Vision module will be active on the color page and we are ready to grade the image and make our analysis. Now on the color page click on the Dolby Vision icon in the toolbar to make the Dolby Vision palette appear. The color of images may look flat on your screen if you are using an SDR computer because we set the color space in P3D65 ST2084. Trust what you see on your reference monitor, not your computer monitor. As a tip we need to change the scopes to nits when we are grading in HDR. We can do that by clicking in the options menu on the left side of the waveform and selecting HDR. Now we are ready to start grading. After finishing our grading we will perform the Dolby Vision analysis. In case that our project has an aspect ratio other than 1.77, it is very important to set up your output blanking before doing the analysis. This will let the Dolby algorithm know what your active picture area is. If you set the letterbox after the analysis, the changes made to the image will also affect the letterboxing, and also the analysis will have into account the black level of the letterbox as the darkest point in this scene. The image aspect ratio gets recorded as level 5 metadata, which is a global setting. We can set up the blanking in Resolve in two different ways. If we want to apply it to the whole project, we can click in the timeline menu at the top of the interface and open the output blanking option. Here we can select the one corresponding to your project. In our case, we will choose 2.0. If we want to modify the output blanking per clip instead of a global setting, we can click in the sizing palette and in the drop down menu select output sizing. Here we can click the option menu at the top right of this palette and choose show blanking clip override. This option allows us to modify specific output blanking values for the whole project. But if we switch to the clip tab, you can deselect use timeline blanking and set a customized output blanking for that clip. Any clip where you perform this operation will have per shot L5 metadata overriding the global setting. For example, in this case, I'm setting a 4x3 blanking in this specific clip by moving these sliders. Now we are ready to make our analysis in the Dolby Vision palette in Resolve. On the left side of the Dolby Vision palette we will find the setting for our target display and different methods to perform the analysis. On the right side we can find our trim controls to refine the SDR image after the analysis. And as every panel in Resolve we have an option menu at the top right side. We can use these options to copy and paste analysis and trim values. Or you can choose to import Dolby metadata to our project from an XML. Before doing the analysis it is crucial to check that the target display output is set up to 100 nit BT709. This target display is the equivalent to the SDR grade. It is mandatory to make a Dolby analysis on every clip in the timeline. When it comes to the analysis we can use different methods that will analyze the whole runtime of the project or only some portions of the timeline. In order to obtain the derived SDR version for each clip, Dolby Vision analyzes the brightest point in the shot and the darkest and also calculates the average luminance. By doing this the Dolby Vision algorithm will tone map the HDR image into SDR while trying to maintain the creative intent from the HDR version. And even though the technology does a great job at converting between these two formats, Dolby Vision offers a set of tools to further refine the SDR version after the analysis.
Let's go through the four options Dolby offer us to perform the analysis. All of the options will create L1 metadata. All will analyze all clips from the timeline. It can be time consuming and it is the recommended option to use if it's the first time you will be analyzing a show. We are not going to click this option yet. Let's move to select. This option will analyze the timeline frames corresponding to the clips being selected. This can be used to analyze a single or selection of clips, depending on how many shots you have selected in the clip sequence viewer. In this case, we will select these three clips and hit selected. Here Resolve will analyze each shot individually and produce unique metadata for each one. This option can be helpful for a clip coming from VFX added at the end of the project after a complete analysis was made or for some quick analysis. Once the analysis finishes, we are going to find that some options in the Dolby panel become available to use. If you don't have all the options enabled as I do, it is because maybe you don't have a Dolby license. For more information, please contact your Dolby representative. At the lowest part, we will see some numbers that cannot be modified. These are L1 values assigned during the analysis of the current frame or shot. Min refers to the lowest black level in a shot, max to the highest luminance level, and average to the average level of luminance across the shot. These values cannot be modified separately, and if we move to another analyzed clip, you will notice that every clip has different values. Now let's see what blend is. If we use this option, we can choose two or more clips and Dolby Vision will average the L1 values across the selected shots. This means that Blend will treat your entire selection as one clip. After the analysis, all the selected clips will end up having the same L1 values, and that Dolby use all of the selected shots to average these values. Blend can be very useful when you are trying to match the mapping across a series of similar shots. Let's click first this clip, and then with command to select these four shots that are actually the same, just separated by the editing, and then click blend. Now let's see the number of the L1 metadata in the analyzed clip. Here we have in the max 0 0.749. Let's move to the selected clips. As we see, we have the same number. Blend combines the analysis of one clip into the others, it is a fast way to save time and it is really useful to match shots. So finally, what is the frame option for? Let's think of a shot with different consistent lighting, like one with flashes of light coming in and out, or a sequence shot that goes through different lighting conditions. Maybe after the analysis one part of the shot looks good, but the rest doesn't. For these shots, we can manually choose a poster frame representative of the shot. For example, in this case, this one represents the whole clip intention. Let's hit frame. This will analyze the existing frame and apply the values from that frame to that entire clip. In case we need to copy the analysis to another clip, we can click the options menu and we will see a lot of different options. In our case, we will select copy analysis metadata. We will then move to another clip, select the option menu again, and click Paste Analysis Metadata. That's how you copy an existing analysis to some other clips. Finally, let's comment on some consideration on the analysis process briefly. Try to set all the elements of your sequence in the first layer of your timeline. If you have a clip in the second layer, the analysis will be wrong. Add your dissolve in the timeline before setting your analysis. In this case, Resolve will automatically calculate per frame metadata for every frame of the Dissolve. It is always a good idea to review later if the mapping is working. Always analyze your text files and graphics in the sequence. If the text or graphic is in a second layer and you want the text to be accounted for on the analysis, then you can make a compound clip with both elements and analyze the compound. You cannot animate trims in DaVinci Resolve at the moment. As a walkaround, the only way to have per frame metadata that can mix two analyses is by using a dissolve effects on the timeline. 
For instance, if you have a wide transition between two clips, export it as a single clip, import it again to resolve, cut the clips and apply a dissolve transition. Then, if you analyze part A and part B, resolve will create per frame metadata to smoothly transition between clips. This can be used in any code where we want a smooth transition between two shots or maybe inside the same shot with two very different lighting conditions. Now we will then click all to analyze all the timeline and create in every clip of our sequence L1 metadata, obligatory for a Dolby Vision analysis. Now that the analysis is done, it is always essential to check the mapping in real time. It is also important that now we will be reviewing an SDR image. We also change the setting of the monitor we have in front of us to properly reproduce Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. To check the analysis we did, it is crucial to change the scope to an SDR scale. It can be millivolts or 10 bits. In our case, we are selecting 10 bits. Then in the Dolby Vision panel, double check your target display. And remember, we can bypass the analysis and trims to get the P3D65 PQ image by disabling the Enable Tone Mapping Preview checkbox. Another way of doing this is by having a dual monitor setup. In Resolve, if you have an I.O. video card with two SDR outputs, you can have one output to be HDR and the other SDR. You can do this by selecting dual output and separate signal in the monitor video settings. That way you can see HDR and SDR at the same time. After reviewing our analysis, if we need to refine the mapping, we can make future adjustments by using the trim controls or the mid-tone offset slider. Remember, it is not required to modify these controls to deliver a Dolby Vision Master if we are satisfied with the original analysis. If we do want to refine the resulting image, then the first setting to modify will be the mid-tone offset slider. This works as an offset for the L1 analysis. This global trim control adjusts the image midtones without affecting the blacks and highlights and gets recorded as L3 metadata. If we feel that the slider moves really strong, we can press the Alt key while clicking the adjustment and the movement will be more gentle. If we want to start with this adjustment in all the timeline clips, we can select the option menu Select Copy Midtone Offset, then select All Clips and click in the same menu, Paste Midtone Offset. In my case, I will not do it. Now we are going to dive in into the trim controls. But before starting, make sure that the trim controls for drop down menu on the left side of the Dolby panel match our target display. Now let's check what these trim controls will do. Leaf Gamma and Gain works really similar to the Resolve controls. In this case, I'm moving the Leaf slider to affect the shadows, the Gamma affect the midtones, and the Gain will move the highlights on the mapped image. It is crucial to be aware of the positive lift, since if your project aspect ratio and image aspect ratio are not correctly set up, then we may be lifting the blacks on the blanking of that shot resulting on inconsistent blanking through the program. As a tip, try not to use positive values over 0.025. And if you want to raise your leaf more, you can do it by increasing the gamma and lowering the gain like in this case. It is really important to mention that these trims are metadata modifiers, not color correction controls. These modifications will not change anything on your HDR grade. Now we have saturation gain. This trim enables us to adjust the mapped image overall saturation, but will not completely desaturate the image as you can see in this case. The chroma way setting reduces luminance in highly saturated colors and helps to preserve color saturation in the upper midtone and highlight areas. Tone detail reduces luminance in highly saturated controls, increases contrast in highlights, and image becomes sharper. We can see what is happening in the waveform at the top of the signal. 
mid contrast bias compresses and stretches the image around the midtone region. If you feel that is affecting much range of your image, you can combine this with leaf and gain trims for precise results. Highlight clipping trim reduces or limits details in the highlights. This control can affect the mids, so you may require to compensate with gain or gamma trims. And that's all for the primary trims. Now we will move to the secondary trims. Both controls are recorded as level 8 metadata. First, we are going to find six color saturation controls that allow us to adjust the saturation of the mapped image individually. Here we can modify the saturation of the primary and the secondary colors. When we move them, you can see that they were really similar as the hue versus sat curve in Resolve. They are a precision color trim control. Here we can also find the option to link them and they work as an overall saturation control for your image. In the next row, we are going to find six color hue control that allow us to offset the hue of the mapped image individually. These controls are especially useful when trying to fit or shift a white color gamut into a limited color gamut like Rec. 709 SDR. It is important to say that by the moment of this video, Resolve cannot animate any of the trim sliders. If we want to copy these trim values to other clips in the timeline, you can select the option menu and select copy trim metadata. Then we will choose three clips in the option menu and click paste trim metadata. Also in this menu, we can reset the trims. Finally, let's review really fast the different steps we have done in our Adobe analysis. First, in the project setting, we set our mastering monitor. This adds the level zero metadata. Then we make our analysis using different techniques. This analysis creates level one metadata. After the analysis, we review the program and use a global trim called midtone offset in the mapped image to adjust the overall luminance of the result. This is the level three metadata value. And finally, we made adjustment in different sections of the image using primary and secondary trims. This information gets recorded as LA metadata. All of this information goes at the very end of the color chain in Resolve. Now the question is, what we can do with all of this metadata we have created? After this analysis, we can create an IMF. The IMF will export the image and embed the metadata. If you want to know more information about how to create an IMF, click this link. If Resolve is not our mastering software, or if you are going to make an IMF in another project, or if they are asking us for a metadata file, you can export this metadata as an XML. To export the metadata, we are going to move to the edit page. And we will right click in our timeline icon. Here we will select the timeline menu, then export. And inside this option, we will choose Dolby Vision XML. This will open a pop-up window. Here make sure in the options tab to select Dolby Vision version 4.0. In the name, we can paste the already saved name. This is a suggested name that will have the version of the analysis, the color spaces, and the target, as well as the naming of the program. We will click Save. Finally, you can use your Adobe Analysis to export display refer deliverables in SDR. We are going to move to the Deliver page and select as a custom preset H264. It can be any ProRes or DPX file. Here you can customize the codec as you prefer. But suppose you want the SDR Dolby derived to be printed in the file. In that case, we need to open the Advanced Settings tab. In the Tone Mapping options, we need to select Dolby Vision. This will enable you to choose what tone mapping you want to burn in in your file. We will pick the analysis we made and refine. In our case, 100 nits, BT709, BT1886, full. Then you can proceed with the file name and the other settings and start render. 
Hopefully this video has provided enough context on how to set up a project in Adobe Vision and the different steps of the analysis inside DaVinci Resolve.